thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. We've been waiting for this day for a long time. We've been working very closely with IBM for several years now to create this G5, and it is so exciting to launch it here today. So this is the chip. Now, let's build a system with it. We start off building a system, even before we get to the processor, with a chip that Apple designed. It's the G5 system controller, and it's among the world's fastest ASICs. It's got a point-to-point -point architecture, so there's no contention between the various things that want to send data around through the system. Dedicated bandwidth to main memory for each subsystem. We designed it, and IBM is fabricating it in the same state-of-the-art facility that's building the G5. So this is our system controller. Now to that, let's add a G5. The G5, as we talked about, has a one gigahertz bus. That's six times faster than the G4. 8 gigabytes per second of bandwidth into this processor. 64-bit wide bus, double data rate, bi-directional. It screams. And we can add a second processor. Now, when you add two processors, this is where these independent buses really come into play. Because one processor does not slow down the other one at all. They're completely independent. We have 12 times the bandwidth of the G4 here. And again, there's no contention for the bus, no slowdown when you add a second processor. Then we add memory. We decided to go with the hottest memory money can buy, and that is 400 megahertz, 128-bit wide DDR memory, over twice the bandwidth of the G4. We can get 6.4 gigabytes per second of bandwidth out of this memory system and into those processors. Now let's add graphics. For graphics, again, we decided to use the latest and the greatest AGP-8X Pro graphics. Twice the bandwidth of the G4, two gigabytes per second. We got the latest chips from NVIDIA and ATI, and we power Pro cards. You can put in the, the, the really high-end Pro cards if that's what you want. So next, we put on, start to put on the I.O. Slots. Again, the latest and greatest, 133 megahertz PCI-X slots almost eight times the bandwidth of the G4, two gigabytes per second. We connect the slots with hypertransport into the main G5 system controller. We got 133 megahertz 64-bit slot and 200 megahertz 64-bit slots. And next, let's connect our storage. For storage, again, we turn to the latest technical standards, and that is serial ATA to connect to the drives. 1.5 gigabit per second of bandwidth. We got independent interfaces to each drive, again, so there's no contention. This is an Apple-designed I.O. chip, again connecting to the mothership G5 controller with hypertransport. And lastly, the rest of the I.O. coming off this Apple-designed I.O. chip, we've built in an incredible suite of high-performance I.O. We've got Firewire 800 and 400, USB 2.0, Gigabit Ethernet, Airport Extreme, Bluetooth, and for the first time, optical, digital, in and out, as well as analog, uh, audio in and out. So, this is our system, and uh, we're v mighty proud of it. We think it is the beginning of a whole new generation of architecture for Apple. So, that is the system. What kind of product are we going to build out of this? Well, the first thing is we're going to build products that have single or dual processors, obviously. Up to eight gigabytes of memory, we are going to break through the four gigabyte barrier. And on this system, ship up to eight gigabytes of memory. Now, why is this so important? Obviously, if you have stuff that takes more than four gigabytes, it becomes extremely important. But it's, it's even important in, in more subtle ways. The G5, as we said, is a monster in terms of bandwidth. And talking to the disk drive, it can talk at 150 megabytes per second if only the disk drives would feed data that fast. But to memory, it can talk at 6.4 gigabytes per second. That's over 40 times faster. And so with more memory, what that means is you can leave stuff in memory and not have to swap it off a disk. This is huge for certain applications, 40 times faster. This is so fast 
that you can transfer the contents of an entire DVD in less than a second. So eight gigabytes of memory. We're building in a 4X super drive into all the models. We're building in GeForce FX5200 Ultra chip into the two lower end models. And a Radeon 9600 Pro, one of the hottest mainstream graphics chips around, into the high end model. You can configure it however you want on our website, however. Now all this great stuff, should we put it in here? No. No. We need a much more advanced enclosure to hold our next generation system. And we've been working on it for some time, and it is really exciting. It looks like this. Like that. And let's go ahead and show it to you now. <clears throat> there it is. This is an all-aluminum enclosure. <coughs> this is an all-aluminum enclosure that is super high-tech and can handle the power, uh, both processing power and thermal power, generated by such an architecture and its follow-ons to come. I've left the door open off the side so you can see this thing. It is a thing of beauty. Now, let me show you better on slides the inside. So we've got our enclosure here. We take, this is the front. As you can see, we want to get a lot of air in the front. There's the back. As you can see, we want to get a lot of air out of the back. So let's take off the door. Now, there's a piece of plastic on the inside which routes the air around. Let's take that off. And you can see the two processors, place for cards, place for rotating storage. This enclosure has four separate thermal zones. One that goes through the power supply at the bottom, one that goes through the processor bay and the memory, one that goes through the I.O. cards, and one that goes through the rotating storage. In this enclosure, we've got a breakthrough. We've got, this whole thing has got computer controlled cooling system in it. We've got nine fans in this enclosure. <laughs> now you might think, oh my God. Nine fans means it's going to be nine times louder. No. It turns out the opposite is true. Because by putting the fans precisely where they're needed and independently controlling them all, we can make it a lot quieter. A lot quieter. As a matter of fact, we're down to 35 dBA at normal use at room temperature. This is twice as quiet as the latest G4. So. This is an amazing architecture. It's an amazing enclosure that's going to give us a tremendous amount of room to grow. So the systems we're going to build are going to have single or dual G5 processors, up to 8 gigabytes of memory, up to 500 gigabytes of internal storage, half a terabyte, the 4X super drive. They're much quieter using an advanced cooling system and the very professional aluminum enclosure, super rugged and super beautiful. So this is the new G5 enclosure. And again, I want to stress, we're the only folks that put handles on things. Because our pro customers love them. To be able to take these machines around, swap them in and out when they need to. This is huge. Nobody else in the whole industry does this. And we've kept that on the new G5 enclosure. The new Power Mac G5. It's going to come in three models. We got three models. The first model, a single 1.6 gigahertz G5 chip, quarter gigabyte of memory, 80 gigabytes of hard drive, GeForce 5200, 4X SuperDrive, 1999. Second model, 1.8 gigahertz processor, step up 200 megahertz.